by the time you're 30, if you don't have a big hit, then you're kind of done. You know what I mean? Fuck. Um, that's, I know. That's why we're comedians. I know. Yes, <laughs> yeah, uh-huh, that's why we're comedians because why, the uglier we are, the funnier yes. men on the internet think that we are. A hundred percent and so, not bitches. So, yeah. Right. So as we get older, we just all we have to do is get uglier and we'll yes. suddenly be funny. I'm I'm working on that now personally. That's my own personal goal, just to be real fucking ugly. Courtney Warner, I'm so excited to have you on this podcast. I've you've been like in the the back of my mind wanting to get you on this podcast for so long and I'm so glad that you reached out to me when you did. It was like serendipitous. Uh first of all, how are you doing? Oh my god. Well, Sydney first off, thanks for having me and I'm so excited to be here and uh I'm doing well. Just hanging out, you know. I'm uh work today. I'm going to go see a movie later tonight. So, yes, just hanging out. Yes. Yeah, and I'm doing this awesome podcast. Like I'm so yes. stoked to be here. Yes. Well, how how are you? Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm gonna go see this uh, movie called Old Boy, and it's a, uh, believe it's a. I cr- love uh, old boy. Oh, really? I love the Korean film. Yeah, the Korean film. Oh, I love yeah. Old Boy, dude. They're showing it tonight, and then also on Thursday at the Bell Court. So I'm going tonight. Uh, oh it's like goodness. at nine twenty, and then uh, I think on Thursday it's also like around nine o'clock. Also, for any listeners, sorry that you missed your chance to see. Old sorry, Boy. guys, you missed it. <laughs> wow, I love Old Boy. Man, Korean. Yeah. One day, one day, I'm going to tell you about how much I love Korean movies, and we can talk about our favorites. Oh my god, they're um, they're they're great. They're like they I I feel like they've been slept on for sure. They feel like they're it's like in my mind what a like the pacing of a lot of them is like Western, yes. like old Western film from like the sixties, fifties and sixties, yes. you know, just like a character development and there's time and there's just she- scenes where the- nothing has to really happen, but it's in there. Yes. And kind of like an old Martin Scorsese, Scorsese film or something like that. Yes. You know, that's how I yes. feel. Yeah. That's why I love them. But they're still 100%. making movies. That's how they make their movies to, to this day. Like I saw a uh, decision to leave. Holy shit. That was incredible. I saw that last year. I'm surprised I didn't get an Oscar nomination. And then, uh, Drive My Car was another one where it's like three hours long. You thought it ended halfway through because they rolled credits. mid. Anyway, so yes. big fan of Korean films for sure. Yes, yes. So good. And um, I love what I think makes their suspense and their movies so much better is that uh, like guns are illegal. So they have I to know. like come up with something different than so just creative. your American like shoot up, shoot up, pow, pow scenes. Love I agree. It. it is incredibly creative. And like I feel there's another movie that just came out that I want to see too. Or I think it's on streaming now, but it was in, at the Bell Court. Um, Past Lives, I hear, is really good. Ooh, I haven't seen that one. It's, I think it's on Apple, but it's I, I heard I got a lot of Oscar buzz. I heard it was really great. And so that's something that like it's been a lot of like critics like top. 10 films for the year so far wow. so wow yeah, it's another wow. one every time i think i figured out everything that we have in common i discovered something, <laughs> I know. something new this is amazing yes. i'm like because I've, I've been telling people because people think i'm gonna go see like barbie or something which i already have like i mentioned before but like yeah i'm gonna say old boy and they're like what and i'm like have you then i have to like go through it's from 2003 yes. and it's park chan wook and like these old yes. you know yes. and so, yeah yes. and like so i'm glad that you already knew what i was talking yes. about yes <laughs> old boy yellow sea i yes. saw the devil just oh Oh my god the, oh. the trifecta yes, yes i agree um for anybody listening <laughs> you are also a stand-up comedian here in nashville mm-hmm. that's how yeah. we became friends mm-hmm. you have always been i think one of the coolest most supportive most organized most well put together most female supporting producers in the whole city um oh, thank and you. you're just phenomenal just a phenomenal person but um also you were raised religious. Oh, God, and so yeah. like the, the like every aspect of my life that I'm interested in talking to you to, it applies to you, but I've never really gotten to talk to you about it. And so, right. yeah, I've just, I would love to just give you the floor and, and tell us a little bit about kind of your background and where you're coming from. Yeah, no, definitely. I always love doing podcasts as we can catch up, but also monetize it. You know what I mean? That's, that's how you got to yes. do it. That's how you got to do it. This industry, baby, Taylor Swift, yes. Beyonce, you know, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I was raised, I, so I was raised initially Catholic, uh, like my dad, super Catholic. And so we, me and my brother were baptized Catholic. We did all that, all that, all that jazz, a lot of Catholic stuff around our house too. But then around like, I want to say maybe like, mm, like late elementary school, I, I have, 
how old i don't know ages and grades who is to say um i was also i was homeschooled so not a lot of that didn't really matter to begin with um <laughs> and i'm like i, I forgot about that Numbers, letters, what are they? I don't know. It's amazing I could put my pants on today. So, <laughs> but uh, so we went to, I uh, ended up going to a Protestant non denominational church in my like late elementary through like early high school years. And we would go twice a, or I would go twice a week. It was really where I got to go socialize. I could show off my new outfit if I had a new outfit yes. or like, yes. you know, had all my little crushes there at church too. You know what I mean? Because I, again, I was homeschooled. They're really, really weren't a lot of people to pick from for social group, you know, social group stuff. And a lot of the people I was homeschooled with, homeschooled with went to that church. So it just, churches gave me a chance to meet even more people, which was great. So uh, at least at the time for me. So yeah, that and, was more, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, continue. Yeah, go for it. Oh yeah. I don't, man, I feel like I thought I was really into God and really religious. Like I look back on old Facebook posts and I'm like, oh my God, like that's horrifying. Yeah, okay. But yeah, at the okay. time, you know, you know, but at the time, like if I reflecting on it, I don't think I ever bought it. I don't think I ever believed it. Cause I would, you know, I thought there was something wrong with me. Like I would go to like the little like church camps and like pray to have Jesus in my heart and like all that stuff. And I just was like, I did it. And I meant it as much as I could at the age of like 11 or 12. And it just did not, it didn't take, it didn't take honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I feel like I've, I've mentioned this before on the podcast, but I feel like we go through this phase where we are like mini evangelicals, where we're yeah. like as religious as we can possibly be. We're posting mm -hmm. about it. We're yeah. talking about it. We may even like there was a while where I even kept a little Bible in my backpack all the time. Oh, I did too. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh and I think. I, the more that I talk to people the, that are like tra traumatized from religion, mm -hmm. the the more I think what it is, is we always thought it didn't seem right. Yeah. And we thought we were the weakest link. So we were overcompensating all Girl. those years. Yeah, yes. that was me because yes. I, I, I still and I still have this thing with myself. And I don't know if you're into the Enneagram, which I, apparently is also vaguely religious, which I don't know how I feel about I didn't that. Know that. Apparently has religious ties, which I thought was I feel like I've been lied to. So me too. I was like, wait a second. I was wait like, a wait second. a second. Is this a Gideon Bible in my, you know, like <laughs> in I the get form of a question? Into praying? Right. <laughs> it's so um, but I'm a four on the Enneagram, as they say, which always it's like that's the individualist or the artist. And I think like more specifically, like like my weaknesses or my like dark underbelly is that I always feel like I'm incomplete or I'm missing something that everyone else has. And wow, I feel, I feel like attacked. Right. And I feel like part of that stems from like church where I remember asking all of my like youth leaders and pastors being like, why don't I feel God inside of me? Which fucking gross. You know, that <laughs> sounds so gross to say that out loud. I said, I mean, I'm cringing saying yes. that, you know, but and they didn't have an answer. Like, oh, you just got to have faith. And I'm like, but I don't understand any of these cons do you know what i mean it's a lot to yes. put on a kid to make yes. them try and understand that shit you know like yes. your brain's not fully developed i didn't even have my first period yet and you want me to like believe that a man lives inside of me a man being yes. you know yes. and i didn't feel it so right yeah. right and and that's like i think that's such a like you know we we always like laugh and joke but it's also such a heavy part of the experience is mm -hmm. especially in protestantism they do such a a strong job they i don't want to say they do a yeah. good job they mm -hmm. they do a very they do a job of right. convincing you that if you're not feeling god if your prayers aren't being answered if things aren't going the way you want it's because you're clearly not doing something yes. the right way and we yeah. talked about this a little bit before officially going on the record but um it's like that 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 servant spirit that mm -hmm. i must even though a relationship is supposed to be 50-50 or 100-100, yeah. right? right? For whatever reason, I'm supposed to do everything for God while he mm -hmm. does nothing for me and shows me nothing and tells me nothing. Yeah. And then we wonder why all the women have yeah. issues. Dude, <laughs> I know. Why do we all have issues? Why do we, why do we all, all date, date such shitty dudes at first, like in our early 20s? Oh my God, 100%. <laughs> I'm going to work super hard to make you love me and you don't have to do anything for me. You don't have to talk to me. You, you know? don't even have to show up. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to be inside of me, clearly. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just, it's so, it's so, yeah, it's so weird to me because, yeah, I look back on like, I don't, on like, how did I even, like even yeah i don't even know how i can't even get the words out i'm like how does it even work like we're because god i because if god existed then there are all these things that shouldn't be going on i feel like and people there the logic is oh well it's human sin and free will but it's like but he's god like right fuck you know what i mean right i just don't under i would never understand i never understood that 
Like, why would the why would he allow these things, these atrocities to happen, even on a micro level to myself and my family and whatever on a macro level, like the whole world? You know what I mean? Yeah. If he created all of this, gave it, gave the whole earth and the, the whole world to people, you know, and made Adam and Eve and all that shit. And then they sinned. And he's like, oh, but you can't be with me because you sin. Like, that's a really fucked up relationship. I'm sorry, because God is perfect. But then they sin. It's like, but you made them. So it just none of that makes any fucking sense to me. It doesn't make you sense. Know? Like, and I would. I would get in a lot of trouble if yeah. I if I took a video of myself getting a dog treat, mm -hmm. rubbing it in my dog's nose, being yeah. like, don't you want this dog treat? Don't you want this? Mm -hmm. Her taking the dog treat and me being like, because you did that, you live in the backyard now. Yeah. You're not coming 100%. inside. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. It's like, oh, because I put it in your face. I'm I'm ha have some power over you. Certainly you want this. And then it's your fault. Yeah. A hundred percent. I bought it. I brought it home. I bought it knowing you'd like it. I yeah. brought it home without telling you it was against the rules yet. I yeah. opened the package. I offered it to you. You trusted me. You took it. And I said, fuck you yes the <laughs> in the, right in the garden of eden like what the fuck like why would you even make a fucking tree <laughs> like okay, that? Right. why would you have that there like oh, tree bush whatever interpretation it is like why would you even have something there you're like hey just don't do that you know and again he made humans so he knew they were gonna he knew, he knew they were gonna do it so the, the logic of like well god knew they were gonna do that and people are gonna do this but because of free will i let them do it but because i'm god i'm perfect so i can't it's this whole fucking cycle of like bullshit right? it's right? like literally right. the human the human centipede of bible bullshit in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry. yeah and like <laughs> <laughs> sorry I, like that was wonderful that was never beautiful. thought you'd hear a bible it. reference a bible <laughs> podcast uh, you know about human centipede but you know i try to shoehorn that in whenever i can <laughs> i i i'm here for it and the weird part is for the first time in years i talked about human centipede like two days ago so the yeah, fact that you brought that what? up was like what? Wow, that's so crazy. We're, we're connected. I think, yeah, for sure. We know what's going on. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. man, that, those movies. Wow. <laughs> and Talk so, about the Holy Trinity, <laughs> you know, sorry. Oh, that's, she, the, just the, yeah, yeah that's like, yeah. that's going to be the fourth one where they build like a human triangle. Just right. Like oh my God, a pyramid yeah. scheme. <laughs> what what a hell of a scheme. Right. Jeez. I apologize <laughs> yeah. in advance for anybody who doesn't know what human centipede is and you don't just Google look it. Up it. Just don't even talking. Google don't, it. Um, don't even Google it. <laughs> you can probably imagine what that might be. It's like, oh man, they, oh my God, they could call it like human centipede the the pyramid. Like you can't you can't escape this MLM. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh god so much to unpack there <laughs> dude that'd be like what is it like the way down like that religious that cult documentary about that woman who like you have to lose weight to be that, that's what i'm picturing the next human said a piece movie to be like <laughs> everybody just takes a laxative at yes once. it's oh well they that's what they want that's what they want in those movies it's what they want that's, that's what, what they, they want to give the people so that's it doctors hate her for this yes. one trick yeah um <laughs> and so you were but you were religious for a while right like Dude, technically yeah, yeah, yeah like until it, mid 20s uh i'd say early 20s i kind of like 20s? pretty much i want to say maybe like mm, maybe like night like 20 i'd say around 20 was when i was like okay we're, we're fucking done with this um also i hope it's okay that we're swearing i realize oh, i've just yeah. been just no, you know just making a nun making a nun sweat right now um <laughs> <laughs> um or blush i don't remember that i have an aunt i i forgot to mention i have an aunt who's a cloistered nun um, really yeah, I can talk about her because she'll never hear this. So it's like, <laughs> and if it was, you know, she's a liar. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So she's um, but yeah. Anyway, so we can talk about her later on. Uh, uh, but oh, so yeah, I was religious up until all through my teens. I went to like Christian like summer camps and all that stuff, and then I uh, went to one year, made waited a whole year at a Christian college, um, and then I was like, this is terrible. Well, mainly because like I experienced like blatant racism for the first time there. And I was like, is this what is this what this is? Because like I went to this school in Indiana. Uh, I'll just say, I'll put them on blast. Anderson University still paying oh, off the loans for the one Anderson. year. Yeah. You know, what up, Anderson? Uh, gross. Um, it was fine. <laughs> I met some decent people there. But my God, uh, what a what a time that was. And it was it was hard because it was also like I was homeschooled for 12 years, never went away from home, never did it anything really without my mom being there, which that's also kind of a weird dynamic. Some it's like some girl, some fucked up Gilmore girl shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like uh, just she was out. We were always just kind of a, with each other and then going away for a year. And it was such a like a culture shock, you know, I bet. To live alone. Yeah. And yeah. so um, and then, yeah, and then the racism like there is this guy. um 
oh, do I want to say, I don't care. I don't even want him to have like the recognition. He knows who, he wouldn't listen to me anyway because he's so racist. Um, This dude, he was uh kind of adjacent to a friend group that I was part of and he would never make eye contact with me or look at me or talk to me. And I did not know why. Like I experienced like microaggressions growing up but I did not yeah. realize until later on, just even from my own family of like, they're just kind of just ignorance, you know, but having some blatantly like not speak to me. And then I had to ask someone, I'm like, why does he talk to you, but not talk to me? And they're like, oh, well, he comes from a certain kind of family and they just feel certain ways about different types of people. Non, basically, basically like a, he's like a baby white supremacist. Like he just could not handle. Well, and also since when is that like, okay. Oh, he comes from that type of family. Oh yeah, okay, that's fine. It's like, no, no. Tell him fuck- to act that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fucking insane. Like, you're 18 years old. You're an adult. You're acting like yeah. little Draco Malfoy out here just running around. You know what I mean? Uh, it's so, it was so strange. And also, he was, like, incredibly ugly, too. And I'm like, his skin and his hair were the same exact color. And I'm just like, and you think this is superior, you think that you're being the superior being right now? Like, come on. You're all the same shade of beige. I don't understand how how you <laughs> just came out. Beige. A beige, yeah. <laughs> Uh, double feature with the human <laughs> triangle. <laughs> yes. Fifty shades of beige, followed yeah. by human centipede, the holy yeah. trinity. Yeah. <laughs> oh my Man. god. We're done. Um, we're just yeah, done. We're, we're canceled. The internet's yeah. broken. Um, take that, Ticketmaster. We broke the internet a second time. Um, and then, like, I remember overhearing some other boys talk at college about this other. There's one other Asian girl at the whole school with me. She was on, lived on my floor. Super beautiful. Uh, was an athlete. Like very, very objective very beautiful girl and i remember someone overhearing some guys talk at like we were like at the gym so it was like an open people could i heard it overheard it yeah and and somebody and one of the guys was like oh well what about i won't say her name either what about so and so we'll just call her kelly huh? what about kelly and he and the other guy was like i mean she's asian so no i wouldn't date her i was just like what i do love when the trash takes itself out though Yes, that I dream. do love when like red flags wave themselves mm-hmm. and I don't have yeah. to like get involved in any way first. Yeah. But that sucks. Yeah. And, and I immediately like- told her that they talked to her about talked about her that way. Yeah. And what did she say? Was she, she like surprised? She- not really. I think she also was like, oh, yeah, you know how she and I kind of were able to connect like, oh, you know how people are, you know, whatever. I don't think she's I think she transferred the year at the same year. We were both freshmen. I think she also transferred out of that school, too, which I don't blame uh-huh. her. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just those two things stick in my mind so much of like what it's just like the blatant. Like it's almost comical, like the kind of racism that I that I experienced there. Obviously, you know, I clearly didn't get enough of it because I live in the South now. So, you know, uh, but yeah. masochism. Um, <laughs> Just I just yeah, I just loved I loved being taken down a peg. I'm too confident, yeah. so I need to be reminded that whoa, people. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You're a woman and you're Asian. Simmer down. Simmer I know why you, you have so confident. many. Your opportunity. You have so many opportunities. I can get a job so easy. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I think you have a, a leg up, and I'm a little jealous. I think people give you favoritism too much. I think they do too. Honestly, oh, I know, I know they do. Yeah, I'm glad we're addressing this on this podcast too. I hope yes, we clip yes. up. We, we should just clip this one part and just no context put it out into yes, the world. Yes. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your your blatant favoritism in society. Yes, my today. yeah, my nepotism, my privilege. Let me just talk about yeah. I'm going to talk all about how it is. How people don't judge judge me on my white friend's actions. Never that, you know? That's great. And so do you remember what exactly it was that was that last straw kind of at 20 where you were like, I don't even want to be involved in this anymore? Was it like over time kind of building up or was it a singular moment that just kind of pushed over the edge? I think it was just kind of over time. And then eventually like I met some friends, uh, I transferred back to uh, Kent state, which is where I went for a few years and then went to other school then went back and then went back there to finish out the rest of my, my degree. I made some friends there that in like my department and then they were all like, very non-religious, very progressive, feminist, like forward thinking people, which was really cool. And really is like r- kind of radical to me to meet people yeah. like that, the way yeah. that they thought about sex and the way they thought about abortion, the way they thought about religion, politics, all of that. Because it's all stuff that I was like, yeah, I think this is I agree with this. But like, you know, intrinsically, I agree with this. But I am I have a block in my life. It's like, oh, I shouldn't think this way, you know, like, yeah. Um, and then also at my at my day job, I was able to make a lot of friends there who also like went to either neighboring like state colleges or whatever, you know, so having a nice little friend group that wasn't just rooted in homeschool and in the church and all that stuff really made me realize like, oh, this is what these are who I should be around. This is what I want to do. Yeah. And then, yeah, and just also that church we were going to uh, fucking terrible church, honestly, like I remember. And I don't want to, I don't, I won't divulge, but my, 
family was going through something pretty hard. Specifically, my mom was. She had to go through some some pretty hard stuff. And I remember that she called the church in, uh, that we were going to. She was like in tears, like I have this. I'm going through this hard thing. Can I just have someone to talk to? Because like, what basically that's her job. Like, what are we tithing yeah, every week? That's Do, you know, literally, you know? what they're for. Yeah. Yeah. And and the and the 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 pastor pastor youth minister. Sorry, Drew Davis. But like, no, I'm joking. You know, no, it wasn't Drew Davis. So I'm not making <laughs> it wasn't youth Drew. Ministers. He would have been like five at the time. Right. I know exactly. <laughs> but um, I uh, I the the youth pastor that was working there at the time, he answered, and he, my mom was like in tears, like needing to some counsel, and he was literally like, "What do you want me to do about it?" Well, pray maybe first of yeah. all. Yeah, and my that my would mom be nice. and my mom was like, "Oh my god!" Like she's like, "What?" And he's like, I, "I don't really know what you want from me right now." That was literally how he spoke to her at a very very dark time where it was really rough for our for and I yeah. Uh, Wow. And, and, my, and ever since then, it's like my mom was like, well, we're probably not going to go there anymore. And then I was like, yeah, yeah. I don't want to go there either. I'm like, fuck that guy. Yeah. Uh, I saw him, looked him up on Facebook recently, recently, shiny, gross ass face. He's disgusting. He's a piece of shit. Um, I can't believe you'd ever speak to anyone that way. You know, no. that's wild. And for people to be like, oh, uh, you know, pe I've heard this whole st statement recently or this thing like where a lot of Christians are like, oh, man, uh, atheists and agnostics are really, really nice to people now. So like they're ruining our whole brand. I know it's like a lot of jokes that people make, yeah. you know, but it yeah. is true where it's like you shouldn't have to have like a religion or something keeping you in check. If that's like your true. Yes. Those are your true colors while you're at your job. You yes. know what I mean? That's yes. Horrifying. Huge. Not only that, but like I was talking to a guest recently about how, you know, one of the first things when people find out like you're an atheist or an mm -hmm. agnostic is they yeah. ask you, you know, well, then why don't you just like steal or murder or do yeah. crimes if you don't think there's like an afterlife? And my thought is, is the only thing keeping you from being a rapist is the fact that there's an afterlife? Please stay in church. Please Jesus do. Christ, like, I, <laughs> I think it says so much more about the person asking the question than it does yes. about who they're asking. It's like, what do you mean? Why? I just, I don't think it's okay to kill people like whether yeah. or not I burn afterward or not. I, I'm just going to turn to dust in a box, but I don't want to kill other people before I get there. Dude, I know. I don't I do not get that logic. I remember listening to listening to their uh, like a Christian radio station when I was in high school. And I thought this at the time it was such a profound thing that the DJ said. He was like, oh, what if at the end of the day, like uh, this was just like a nice story that made me be a better person. And at the time I was like, oh, that's nice. And that's such a good way. That's like profound. But now as an adult, I'm like, why? Why does this? Why does this, a fairy tale have to make you be a better person? You know what I mean? Like, why? Shouldn't you just like right. have there's, there's certain social rules and like legal rules you should just follow well, that you shouldn't as, do, you know? As you can see, it doesn't always make you a better person, right? No. Like, I know lots of wonderful, wonderful, kind Christian people, but mm -hmm. like your mom's experience shows you that you can even be the leadership in uh -huh, the group leadership. and you're still not a better person you're still not there for people when they need you you still don't know how to care for people yeah. so if anything we're all we all just start out neutral like nobody's yeah. better for being religious nobody's worse for being non-religious right. it's like it doesn't matter how many times you read the bible if you don't treat people with dignity and respect mm -hmm. and care it doesn't like none of that matters. Yeah, it, you're you're a fu you're a fucking liar and a hypocrite. Like it all like I, I think that was one of the big turning points for me, just feeling very like awful. You know, at the time, like obviously it was terrible that and, and that anyone would talk to anyone that way, but especially leadership in the church yeah. when it's, when a member of the church is is like you know like calling for you know asking for help for some guidance or even just for someone to listen. And that was immediately just was so cold and like shut her off. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that was kind of the beginning of that, and then also just like. Yeah, just seeing like, you know, just seeing how like how women are treated in the church. And yeah. just I remember as a kid and I I hate that this sound probably going to come off and it's going to make me sound like I was like, I'm not like the other girls girl. That's not what I, I mean. Right. We all have had that face. We but, all like, we, we did. We literally did. all had 100%. that face. I 100% yep. did. But like I, whenever I share the story, I don't want it to seem like that was like my driving intention, especially as like, right. a little kid. I just remember as a kid. Uh, even, just even the seed being planted early because like I remember at different functions the old the girls would have to like watch the kids while the moms got to do whatever but then yep. the boys could do whatever they wanted and go play and they'd play soccer they'd play volleyball so I would since I it was just me and my little brother my mom just kind of like he just kind of was he just chilled he didn't really do anything I was like well I'm gonna go play with the boys I don't want to sit and hang out with the girls because I don't I, know, I just didn't sound very fun to me. So I would always yeah. go and, and like play soccer or basketball or whatever. Cause I'd rather just, cause I was like, why do they get to go do that? And why can't, yeah. 
why do the girls literally sit here on the side and watch some of them i guess like to do that they didn't want to rough and tumble which is fine but it was such a such an expectation of all oh, the older kids take care of the younger kids yep that is what it is and it's like we didn't i didn't have sex to have this kid you know what i mean yeah like yeah. i did not want this and like i think i think that's a big part of also i don't want kids at all. I don't want to be a mom. I don't want a parent. I think that's, there's a lot of reasons why, but I think that's part of also like, I don't, that just always just work. You know what that I mean? That early parentification kind of yes. gave you a taste of reality. Right. Like I didn't play with baby dolls. I didn't do, you know, yeah. I didn't really do any of that. Cause I was like, I, I, why do I want to play pretend work? You know what I mean? You know. I mean? <laughs> oh, how about we also pretend that like the dad decides to divorce you, and now there's child support. Let's play pretend. Right, court. Let's just pre yeah, let's pretend this right now. You know, how about we try and go grocery shopping, and the kids are running all over the place. Like God, I just don't understand. So yeah. Anyway, so there's a lot was looking back. There were a lot of little holes like poked in my logic or my thought process of like this just doesn't seem right but it mm. must be because i thought ev i literally grew up thinking everyone everybody was a christian uh everyone was religious and then as soon as i like got out of that bubble i'm like oh most people aren't actually you that's know? a shocking thing to learn mm -hmm. i literally until i was in my mid-20s i guess yeah. i just assumed everybody was raised some kind of religion same like, I, I didn't realize like the word secular was not even in my vocabulary, but I guess yeah. I didn't realize like even people who decided they weren't religious anymore, I could have sworn they grew up that way and they just decided yeah. not to be. Dude, I know. It's so wild. Also, what I always find interesting too is adults who didn't grow up religious but then become religious, you know? That's fascinating, isn't it? I have a few I have a few old coworkers who like who you would think were born and raised Christian in a Christian household, but then you know, I've met their families and like, oh, they're just they're not. They're not religious at all. It's so weird to me. And I don't yeah. I don't get it. I kind of get it because people want something to believe, and that's why people like astrology and people like, you know, whatever. I think there's an element of all of that you know mm -hmm. but man to really commit your life and wake up at like 8 a.m every sunday and like do you know what i mean like, i'm just like that that alone would is, is such a turn off to me <laughs> purgatory on earth purgatory. yes um yeah and i think when i hear those stories it's always really interesting because mm -hmm. i it's one thing to go from religious to not religious because it's from a lot of work to not a lot of work you know baseline yeah. even if you don't have any like theoretical or or uh like psychological reason you're just like mm -hmm. it's a lot of work yeah. but to go from not needing that at all to like mm -hmm. not being told in any way that that you need to like worship god or or avoid hell to then segueing into that lifestyle i'm yeah. always just absolutely fascinated by that me too and i i feel like the people i've talked about talked with about it they like structure they yeah. like having a community and something they can believe in and all that stuff mm -hmm. but i feel like you can also get that from like i don't know doing like a playing like an adult softball league or something like that you know what i mean and it would and like it, it's more fun because you go drink beers afterward versus like you know i don't i don't really there get, is like, no hell in softball so. True. There's no crying in baseball. And there's no hell in softball. I'm pretty. Yeah, I'm pretty sure like pretty positive. Said that. Or yeah, I, I, like that. or yeah, Marilyn I, Monroe maybe. I don't know. Yeah, Barack Obama for sure. <laughs> that's right. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> like Barack Obama. <laughs> there, there was no hell in. Uh, There's no hell in uh, softball. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, uh, know. I don't know if that was a decent. That Barack was pretty Obama. good, honestly. Uh, that was that decent. Was. Thanks. <laughs> so one of the things that I I think the audience should know about you because I feel like you're 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 a little bit underselling your cred here is you went to college at 16 because you yes. were like you were basically what like a sophomore when you finished high school mm -hmm. and you were like a music prodigy too oh no i wouldn't say prodigy i i played i was very very i was incredibly anal retentive so i just would like i'm going to be the best at this i'm going to play all the time that's all i'm going to do and whatever so i yeah i played music uh like ages uh i was like like four, 13, 14 until about, yeah, until about like 21. Um, and I played all the time. I played in bands. I went to music camp, all that stuff. Um, and then I realized I didn't like it anymore. And I was like, well, I'm glad I wasted my whole fucking <laughs> teenage experience on this <laughs> just to be like, I actually don't like this very much. Um, yes. I don't want to do this anymore. Um, but yeah, so I, yeah, and I was the college thing. I will, I am, it, people get weird when I talk about, I feel like talk about it, but I am very proud of it. I don't want to, I you feel, should I, be. It's awesome. I'm, I'm proud that I like test. I basically like, and I think every state has some version of this. I don't know now, but like, I know, I think Tennessee is called dual enrollment, but in Ohio it's post-secondary enrollment option where basically you take like a test, they time you, they, and, they, and then if you pass and you can start taking classes at a college level. <clears throat> 
And so I took it once, uh, just had to like take it at community college. And, and the, but the thing is the government pays for it while you're still in high school. Wow. So that's, that's really, cool. so that's why, so my mom's driving force was let's save money. Let's just, that was not like, we, I don't think anyone particularly thought I was a genius growing up, but she was like, well, let's just see if she can do it. Yeah. And then we'll like send her on her merry way. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I was pretty much a, so I was a sophomore when I graduated high school. So I was 18. That's and then awesome. as a fun fact, I also while I was still in high school as a college student, I tutored psychology and sociology because um, I was is that pretty good at those. And then another fun That's credit, wild. another fun credit I have that I, I wish I need to find my old like college login email because I need to show I need to show people like the email that I got. But uh, my senior uh, yeah, senior year, so I was 19 at the time for my my senior year at the time. Um, and my professor, I was finishing like my senior project. Um, on this paper that I was writing, it was about communication theory because I was a com communication major and like comparing like communication theories to different like pop culture things, like different movies or like basically breaking down script and character development. I didn't realize that's what I was doing at the time, but that's, that's like cool. basically what I was doing and putting it like an essay format. And he, in my one professor, he really liked what I wrote. So he emailed me. He's like, Hey, I'm working on this textbook. I really like your writing. And can I use some of your stuff as a reference? And I was like 19. I'm like, sure, that's great. And so I don't think the book ever came out. I don't even remember that professor's name i need to literally go find my old college email if it still exists and log in because that was like such i remember it, whenever it happened i posted about it on facebook so whatever memory that is that it'll pop up and i can i'll hopefully know to log on and share it um but that was a cool a cool credit that i almost became like a, a college uh, textbook author so that's or, cool that's right so cool I don't remember what it was. I think it was some, I think he really liked like Harry Potter and some sort of communication that I wrote. Like, like, like the, it was, I remember the one I think he liked was the one, uh, was like the three, the three and the, the main three, Harry, Ron and Hermione, and like their, their friendship dynamics are technically. And I think this has been broken down obviously like on YouTube and stuff already, but Hermione is technically the better friend of Harry, but Ron is a boy. So Harry and Ron were always like the boys and Hermione kind of would get left out quite a bit, like in the books. Wow. And so I talked about the you know, like interpersonal communication and gender and communication. That's what I wrote about for my like final essay that he liked. So please um, tell me that you called it Harry Potter and the secrets of communication. I wish. Because like that. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been, awesome. been tight. I, that would have yeah. been next level. I don't <laughs> think I was quite at that point yet. But I was like, yeah, I mean, I was such a little nerd. That's what I chose to do my senior project on. <laughs> That's awesome. So homeschooled, Catholic first, then Protestant afterward. Mm -hmm. Then you graduated high school and went straight into basically your second or third year of college. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then how does one go from that to being a stand-up comedian who is on this podcast to promote yeah. your dope ass show at Blue Man Records, by the way, which we'll talk a little bit more about. But how did how did you how did you make that transition? Like where did this version of you come from? Dude, you know, I was thinking this is I'm really glad that we're doing this podcast now because I've been really introspective lately. Uh, just like some friends I was talking, I'm just kind of processing a lot of things that I haven't talked about in a long time. Um so yeah I, I realized it would church life wasn't for me. I moved to Nashville pretty much as soon as I finished up with college. I had an internship here and then I went home and then basically went home and found a place to live here and then moved here and I've been here uh, ever since. And so during that time, I think I tried to start being, I started trying to be maybe kind of a little bit religious because it's so weird as soon as you move here everyone's like well what church do you go to you yes. know yeah and that was yeah. like oh i guess i gotta pick a church and then all of them are fucking bullshit no offense to anyone who goes to any who goes to i don't remember the names of the churches now cross point i think was one i went to west side church i think i went to that one I had a crush on the guy that invited me uh classic and uh and classic classic Courtney and then the other one was I think Journey or I don't remember it was like that really hip woohoo hippy dippy one that that one was okay but it was a little too like out there even for me yeah. um so I I went to all those and I'm like yeah this still isn't for me and you know and I but I felt like I had to keep up the facade like I was like yeah, yeah. I'm going to church you know because I I moved here and I worked a little bit in the Christian music industry so that's like also why I think that was my world at the time too because interesting my internship was um at Goatee Records uh Toby Max label Reliant wow. K's on that label still i think uh i think wow. they had, like uh, all sorts of people on that label, like, all sorts of like pop bands that were like really popular at the time were on that label um so i interned there in franklin and then i all then when i moved here i like was a, i worked as a merch girl for a little bit like on and off my first time ever going to the ryman was working at a merch date was working merch for 
fuck if I can remember their name. I don't know, Switchfoot. I don't remember. Maybe it was Switchfoot. I don't remember who it was. That'd be but wild if it was. That'd be cool. I don't think it was Switchfoot, but it was someone like that. Maybe it not as Foot popular. Switch, the lesser yeah, known yeah. Shein yeah. brand version. Yes. <laughs> the Shein brand version. The wish.com uh, version. Yes. Um, but I don't remember the band, but it was like kind of in that vein, like the similar type of vibe. Um, so yeah, um, so I did I did that and then I, when I quit playing music and I kind of got in the living situation I was in, my roommate that I had who also worked as a tour manager in Christian music, she ended up moving in with her boyfriend. And so uh, we found a part of it. I'm not really acceptable. Oh, oh, he, he was. I know. I, 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 girl, I know. I was going to say, oh, like, I'm going to have some opinions on that. Right. I definitely, I was like, are you sure you want to do that? You know, <laughs> you're living in sin. But, I know, but you're not, he, he's not, he hasn't even proposed. Like, what do you, you know? And so they moved in together. Um, and then I got out of that like bubble, thank goodness. And was able mm -hmm. to meet, you know, like finally meet other people. And then, um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't really know that there was any concrete moment of like, Oh, I'm going to try stand up comedy. I just knew that I liked comedy. I, I had someone that I dated, um, like in, in like college when I was living, still living at home, that was like, you're really funny. Have you ever thought about trying comedy? And I was like very into music and my own bullshit at the time. So I was like, Oh no, no, I could never, I don't think I, but that kind of planted the seed early, like, you know, the earliest probably thought yeah. of like, I could do this. And then, um, yeah, like I just, I don't, I don't really know. I wish I knew what brought me to it. There was like, I read, uh, I always cite that Judd Apatow's book, Sick in the Head, was what made me feel seen because I read the interviews of the, it's him with all these comedians he's interviewed over the years. And I'm like, oh, so this is like, this is how other people's brains work, how my brain works, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and that's maybe like selling myself a little too, too high because it's like, um, you know, most brilliant comedians in the world are in that book. But like, at least the thought process of how they do things, how they go about the world, I'm like, oh, that makes sense to me. Maybe this is what I should try. And then that yeah. I did. And that was that was the end of it. So, yeah. Yeah. And now you produce shows, you host shows, you like you've done some of the coolest stuff uh, for anybody oh, listening. You. you recorded. I can't believe it was this long ago now, but you recorded your album about a year and a half ago. Year and a half ago. Yeah. In April, ago. April of 2022. Yeah. D again, don't know how my brain did that before we That's were impressive. on the record. My brain was just like remembering a bunch of stuff. It shouldn't. Um, yeah. No, it's yeah, great. It was so it was so good. It was so Thank good because like I had seen you do stand up a bunch mm -hmm. of times. But like, man, that night was just like the I felt like the like thesis project of like everything you'd been working on up until that moment. Thank you. Um, it was just such a great, such a great night. Um, and I'm so grateful that I have that clip from that night because it, the energy was just like alive. Dude, um, yeah. Well, thank you for hosting it. You're an amazing host. My God. Yeah, thanks for booking me. Thanks for booking <laughs> me. It's one of the, the questions that I got growing up was how do you do stand up and be a Christian at the same time? Like, how are you religious and artistic? Right. Was there ever a moment when you were involved in music and then maybe later in comedy where you were like, I have to pick a direction? Did you, mm -hmm. did they not align at all for you? Did you feel like morally obligated to act a certain way? I think with music, it was a little easier because I was intending on working in Christian music. So that was like, oh, this is great. You know, which I think Christian music also is such a weird concept, too. Uh, you know, like it's just very that's how is that a genre of just it's a shitty genre. Like it's just it's it's so it's it's just very strange. But I it was always my plan was like, I'm going to move to Nashville. I'm going to work in I'm going to be like a studio slash touring guitar player. Uh, I'm an, in Christian music. I'm excited. Mean, I at that point knew a fair amount of bands and stuff that I'd be kind of like meeting and networking with because it's I, I forget comedy is different. It's in, in a lot like there at least comedy you have a, you can have a little more grace with getting older and still not aging out of comedy with music. I forget because I'm thinking back now. I'm like, oh yeah, I was like 16 trying to network with like these 23 year olds who had were signed to a major label or whatever. But yeah, because everyone was so young. Because music by the time you're 30, if you don't have a big hit, then you're kind of done. You know what I mean? Fuck. Um, that's, I know. That's I why we're comedians. So. Song yet. I know. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> uh -huh, that's why we're comedians because why, the uglier we are, the funnier yes. men on the internet think that we are. A hundred percent and so, not bitches. So, yeah. Right. So as we get older, we just, all we have to do is get uglier and we'll yes. suddenly be funny. I'm, I'm working on that now personally. That's Me my too. own personal Me goal too. is just to be a real fucking ugly. Me too. Um, Shaved all my hair off and man, <laughs> according to people on YouTube, that's ugly as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> they get, what they, I saw, uh, what was it? Maybe it was you, but like, or someone posted a real one. It's like men hate short hair and red lipstick. They can't handle it. And they can't, and like the I, whoever was posted had like short hair and wore bright red lipstick. And I'm like, yeah, they literally can't handle any of that. It's very funny to me. So yeah, yes. Yes. um, yes. You, I I love it, but 
Yeah, for comedy, I I think there's been a few times. I think what I'm most concerned about with comedy is like, am I going to say anything that might hurt somebody that I love? You know, either yeah. a story or even just like some offhanded comment. Because I know that Absolutely. like just that's more what I'm concerned about is am I going to hurt the people that I'm close to, regardless of like religious or whatever? Because I. I, I feel like I once I started doing comedy, I was very much done with religion. I was like, I've made my peace with it. This is yeah. what I believe. This is what yeah. I think. You know, at least at the time, what I was thinking, you know, so I can just move on and like be my full creative self. And that was like, I feel like I feel like I got kind of cheated out of like a, a childhood in high school and had a teenage experience. So I felt like I kind of went through that during my 20s, which is not a good look to do that when you're because most people already went through all that stuff, you know, but I yeah. feel like I had like my sexual revolution and like all like all these like different dynamics I didn't have to deal with, like with friendships and like work stuff that I yeah. went through when I was like in my early mid 20s, you know. Um, so by then I was pretty much like I hate religion. I hate all I hate. I like I still struggle and i feel bad i'll admit this publicly i have a hard time with people who i meet who are like not other like specifically christians that i meet other christians yeah. like i have like a yeah. the part i'm a part of me that feels kind of repulsed and that's so yeah. fucked up to say but it's like how can you be this way no when i like me knowing my experiences and when other people's experiences you still and like i know not there's a lot of lovely christians out right, there in the but, world but you know what i mean feel is how you feel you know right and i feel bad saying that too because i are even like admit on maybe admitting it i felt this way for a long time where i hear someone's religious and immediately just like i don't fully think less of them but i'm like mm, okay so do you not think i deserve to have rights as a human being right right exactly you know? exactly and it's similar to when you find out somebody's political stance and suddenly you feel differently about them. I mm. know for a fact that Christians feel differently when they find out I'm an atheist. I know yeah. like I've seen, Same. I've seen the look on people's face where they're like, yeah. this is confusing because I've been enjoying your company for so long. Like yeah. you're not what I thought you were, you know, like I, I don't understand. Like my brain is telling me that you should be fine, but my mom, my emotions are saying like, I should stay away from you. Right. But I mean, when somebody is willing to align themselves with a title that represents so much, you can't help but have thoughts about them. Like, why would you want to use that title? You know, mm -hmm. why would you want to call yourself Democrat or Republican when it means right. all these things? Why would you want to call yourself a Christian when it means right. all these things? And you can say what you want that it doesn't. But I have read the whole Bible. Yeah, and I me know too. for a fact it says that. Right. And we yeah. know for a fact what it says. Now mm -hmm. we can go off all day about, well, this actually, what it really means is a metaphor. What it says. But if right. our girlfriend was coming to us and she was saying, well, what he means when he says that is like, yeah, I know that he says he's going to beat my ass if I do it again. Yeah. But what he actually, we'd be like, girl, get away from him. Right. A hundred percent. Yeah. So, so as much as we say, like, yeah, not all Christians are that way. Right. If you are going to call yourself a Christian, though, you just shouldn't be surprised when people right. ask you why you would want to align with a label that represents so much. Right. Just like people ask me, why do you want to align with atheists when so many mm -hmm. of them are angry and they yell all the time? And it's like, yeah, I get that. You know, yeah, so like yeah. I understand that. And if people yeah. reacted that way towards me as though I was going to be aggressive, I wouldn't blame them if that's their right. only exposure they've ever had. Um, right. But I mean. As much as we want to say, you know, oh, no offense or anything, that's a great question for you to have for yeah. somebody is like, yeah. so you, one of the first things you say to me when you introduce yourself is you're a Christian, that tells me a lot mm -hmm. right out yeah. of the gate. That is your first impression. What does right. that mean? You know? Right. It's very loaded and where it's like, it's just one of those things where, and this is just in general, I always am like kind of cautious around, around people just in general. Like, cause I think like as a woman, as a person of color, I always have to have like, there's like two things out of, out of the gate. I have to already have a little extra layer of like, what, what are your, what's your deal? You know, like, yeah. are you, you, you know what I mean? Like, cause I, am I going to be safe around you and not just like physically safe, but emotionally safe or like, yeah. or am I going to get kind of preached at or something like that? Or, yeah. You know, so are you going to take everything I tell you and like tell it to other people? Yes. You know, like what are you Dude. like? What, what are we dealing with here? Yeah. yeah. Are you gonna Are you gonna use me as like? Oh, we gotta pray for Courtney. Are you gonna use me in your prayer circle and like just list off all my weird shit? You know. Yeah. Um. And so that's all. That is a big concern of mine too. And again, not all hashtag not all, hashtag not all Christians. You know, but it, it it is something that I'm trying to work on not having that guttural like gut reaction of like oh no like I'm I'm you know it, it's but I don't know like I also don't think i meet a lot of christians in general i think 
I, I think I maybe I literally think I know Drew Davis. <laughs> I know. Uh, literally, I think that's <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just kidding, Drew. I'm just kidding. I'm yeah, just we kidding. love you, Drew. We love you. He's obviously he's obviously listening to this. Um, two girls talking at him. So, <laughs> yeah. well, and Drew has told me before, and I've had I've heard this from other listeners I've had before that are Christians, as they say they like to listen to the, these episodes because they like to to hear the impact that they are having on non-Christians. They like to hear mm -hmm. what is it that non-Christians think when they meet us? What are they saying? Like, am right. I representing something that I don't even realize I'm representing? So right. if anything, I think it's a good thing for you to be totally upfront and honest about the feelings yeah. that you have when you meet someone who's religious, because that either gives them a chance to say, do I still want to align with this? Or maybe there's right. a different label I can go by. Like, I know a lot of people say Christ follower. They don't say Christian anymore yeah. uh, because of like connotations that come with being a Baptist or something. Oh, I um, see. Or do I need to look intro like introspectively and think, wow, maybe I do actually have these thoughts and feelings about women. Like maybe I really right. do have these thoughts and feelings about the way that I treat gays or the way that I right. view promiscuity or something like that you know dude yeah christ follower is interesting that sounds to me like it's like like it, i feel like that could almost have a similar feel to people as like saying like moist or lover <laughs> or, or like penis you know what i mean like i feel like yes. Like, it's such a it, I, when you said Christ follower, I'm like, oh, that's oh, I saw yours. I saw your face. You were like, oof, what? Oh, oh, I know. <laughs> oh. I I was it's a funny anecdote along with like words and this is nothing to do with what we were talking about, but kind of like so I friend of mine uh bartends uh, at this bar called Betty's, which is just down the street from me. And I went there, me and a few other friends were there hanging out and family feud was on, and we were like talking about uh, talking about it, and we were outside uh smoking, and he was like, Yeah, earlier in the in the episode uh the question was what body part has a crack like you know how family feud is like sir <laughs> and it landed on this apparently this is i'm retelling this from my friend uh it landed on this poor old lady who just mustered up and uh, mustered up enough courage to say my behind like you know on national television my behind <laughs> but then the answer that they had on the board that literally a hollywood writer wrote and a producer approved i'm so sorry i'm gonna say it because i had to hear it turd cutter <laughs> what they called someone's butt and like that's that, they use the term for butt turd cutter gross right we I'm all like, like, them. i have not heard that since i was in like fourth grade <laughs> i've never once heard turd cutter before and i was like you're fucking joking he's like no no it's true and i'm like that is i had a shiver a chill go down my spine literally like and it it takes a lot for me to get like grossed out like that but that is fucking disgusting <laughs> <laughs> that's i'm like that's gonna live rent free in my head for Again, like the i'm next so year sorry but it's been in my, i can't stop thinking about turd cutter i'm gonna google this <laughs> it's literally like what, what runs in my head all day long is uh timothy chalamet and turd cutter that's literally all that i have in my head oh, right now oh i thought you said timothy chalamet in turd cutter and i'm no! like what <laughs> what coming this fall stop this right now well, i'm just gonna see what the first thing is that Make a pops up triple feature with a uh, human pyramid <laughs> human centipede uh turd cut timothy chalamet and turd cutter <laughs> oh my god that was the biggest mistake of my life i just oh. googled because i thought if i googled turd cutter that episode would pop up sydney no there there is a product there is a product called the original poop knife Oh, I've heard about these. <laughs> what is that? What so people let, swear? I swear to God, I only know this because another comedian talked about it in their set once. Um, and I, they so basically people keep like a like a spatula or a big knife by their toilet to cut poop if they can't get it go down the. Can't oh, go down. okay. So they're not like putting it in their body. They're not like no, like, no, no, no. Okay. No, 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 so no. so it's got like it's if you saw it, if anybody googles it, it's the shape has like a little hook on one end and a little spatula on the other end. Uh -huh. So I was just real concerned what you do with that hook. I was just real concerned. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, so you I don't probably have it hanging up like next to like your brush and all that stuff. Oh, thank but... God, you're right. No, that's but, exactly what that's. But for, also, I like how if, I don't who thinks about their shit that much. Like, oh, I better slice this one up before it goes down the drain. Like I've never, I don't think I've ever had a shit 
shit and I, I mean i eat a lot of like vegetables <laughs> i just don't so i like i don't think i've ever had a shit that atrocious that fucking monster ass godzilla shaped you know the creature from the black lagoon size shit that i have to like chop up like fucking ratatouille in the movie like you know what I mean? you're gonna kill me <laughs> like who oh my god when you said when you said to your class that I take I tell highbrow dick jokes, I think this is probably what you meant. Yes. Yeah. Like you literally made a creature of the black lagoon reference. You made a ratatouille reference. You made a Godzilla reference. And you made a shit reference. This is what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. This is like quality improvisation right here. This was like highbrow improvisation. I'm just like picturing someone like like in the bear, just like yes, chef. Yeah, just like I can tell you, I can tell you with a hundred percent sincerity. If I walked into that bathroom and Vince had a poop cutter, we would be over. We would yeah. be done. Like hide it. it if you need it. Hide it. Don't like some things still need to remain a secret, right? Like some yes. things. Like I have never farted in front of that man. Some things yeah. need hey. to remain. Take it to the grave, right? right. You, you don't want him to think that he you fart out of dad ass, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, 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 right. Exactly. Right. He doesn't know at all. Like he literally doesn't no. think women can fart. So if we, you just keep yeah. that. Hey, hey, yeah. don't everybody. It's just us here. It's just us girls. Yeah, it's just us. No They're one is listening. Girls. No one's watching. Um, sorry to all the men that now learn that women fart. It's kind of like is Santa Claus telling a kid that Santa Claus isn't real. So I'm so sorry if your kid <laughs> is listening. To- Wait, what? <laughs> I I hope hopefully Santa no one Claus listens- isn't real. Oh, um. Oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> no, just end the episode right there. Like, oh, no. Close the laptop. We're done. <laughs> Wait, what? Huh? What? It's like I hadn't deconstructed from everything just yet. Just the yes. first one. Still right. got to get Santa out of there, too. Right. Um, that's wild. That's Damn. So, so in the future, do you, mm-hmm. like, first of all, I guess I should ask, how do you align yourself? Do you say, you're spiritual, atheist, mm. agnostic, nothing. Do you like not really need any lo- I, yeah. label on it? I, you know, because I was thinking about this before we came on the pod to, and I really haven't given it much thought. I guess I would li- align more. I, I'd say I, I'd say I straddle between atheism and, and, and being agnostic. And I know some people say you can't be one or the other, but I think yes, you can. You can. I think yes, it's very, can. I think they're very similar, you know, and it's okay. like how. I think it's like you just don't believe in one thing versus you don't believe in anything kind of thing. So I think I'm like yeah. kind of straddle that line because there are things in this life. I don't in like I don't mean like divine intervention or whatever, but there are things that happen that I'm just like, this is too, too weird for it just to be chance sometimes, you know, they're just things where I don't think like, oh, this was God's will. Like, I don't think that at all. But I just think there's some sort of and I think it's mostly just energy. Like there's like a certain energy yeah. that you and another person give off. like us thinking about the same things like that kind of stuff where I'm like, there is some sort of energy. And is that God? I don't think it is. I think it's just human beings. We all everything has energy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when we yeah. die, that energy is somehow released into the world somehow else. And so, you know, I just so I guess like I land more atheist, but agnostic where I'm like, oh, maybe they're just things where I'm just like, oh, that's so interesting that that happened. Um, yeah, I do. And I like astrology just for funsies. You know, yeah, I'm yeah. an Aries. I like to I think it's fun to see the memes. So I guess yeah. I could throw that in there, too. So not. Yeah, not really. But also kind of like just not really anything where it's like it's, you know, people ask. I'm just like, oh, I'm just not a Christian anymore. And I think that leaves it open to interpretation. Yeah. I thought I considered I considered Judaism for a little bit, honestly, too, uh, becoming yeah. uh, becoming Jewish. So, yeah, yeah there, there was, was actually there was a, time. A, a moment in time where I was uh, I was um, about to start taking classes to. Yeah. Um, to convert to, to convert. Judaism. I was about to say transition. I was like, what's the word? <laughs> um, yeah, there was like, there was like a whole period of my life where I thought for sure I was going to convert to Judaism, but that's the whole thing. I don't even know if I've ever talked about this on this podcast, but yeah, that's Damn. like the whole thing in my past. Yeah. yeah. I also yeah. did too. I, cause I had um, a few friends who were uh, like Christian and also Messianic Jewish. Uh, and so I would do uh, like Hanukkah and Seder and Passover with them. And I was very intrigued by the tradition because I think something that I felt that lacked, maybe the, maybe this is what people like about religion or one of the things, like there's tradition and there's order. Yeah, my ha- my home was definitely not that. We were incredibly just chaotic, like, like chaotic in good and bad ways, you know? So there was never yeah. a lot of, I felt like a lot of emotional stability all the time. So even if religion is like a backbone that was just used to kind of use to get almost keep the peace kind of like hey don't say that or like what you know whatever or we shouldn't watch that or like whatever um so i think you know i think what i liked about judaism is that it was very um 
traditional there was a lot of like order and like oh i can see like if you're celebrating something and it is such an intentional celebration versus just mass consumerism you know what i mean like yeah. we're christian like christmas like what the fuck like i i hate i hate the holidays because it is so shoved down your throat of like this is a christian holiday in a christian country like bullshit you know yeah it's just and it's just consumerism it's just it's all yeah. capitalistic consumerism i think it's gross um yeah yeah. So that's why I hate Christmas. So I, I guess atheists are angry. I guess that makes We're sense. Angry as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 like, wow, what a party pooper. <laughs> yeah. I love when people are like, so you're not a Christian. So are you going to like give back your Christmas bonus? And I'm like, fuck no. If a Christian no. wants to give me money, give me money. Yeah, like, 100%. what are you talking about? Uh, the church doesn't pay tax. So yeah, they can give me money. Touche. Touche. You know and I tithe. I tithe for years. So me this too. is my, it's like my taxes. It's like getting my taxes back. With your of. tax return. Oh, I yeah. love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the things I like about Judaism, or at least from, from what I know Judaism to be, is that they don't necessarily have a heaven or hell afterward. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I know that when somebody who is Jewish, even oh, oh she, she's howling in her sleep. <laughs> um, so I, I know that on the uh, on the rare occasion that I meet somebody who's Jewish and not also agnostic, most of the people I know who are Jewish are Jewish by birth, not necessarily yeah. by practice. Right. Um, I know that they're being kind, not because there's points at the end, or right? Because they're afraid of burning forever. They're they're just being kind. Yeah. Same with atheism. Like I know yeah. for a fact they don't think they're getting an award for it at the mm -hmm. end or bragging rights. And so when an atheist is kind to me, which is so often, I I have done Same. nothing but love being a part of like the atheist sphere on YouTube yeah. and stuff like that. You know they're not getting any kind of points for it. Yeah. You know, hundred percent. So, yeah. They're just being yeah. decent people. Because again, like why i and that's just i just never understand that's why it, i never understand the motivation to be a bad person because it's like yeah. it's so easy just to be chill and normal you don't have to go out of your way to be like super amazing to people all the time but just be like a normal decent human being and i feel like that's just easier i feel like that should be like more of the default versus like oh well if i don't do this god's gonna spank me you know give yeah. me a big old of spiritual spanking you know what i mean i just <laughs> okay well, well Courtney. okay, okay. <laughs> the father son and daddy <laughs> say, whoa. well and like my best friend in the entire world is a devout christian mm -hmm. and she's also a wonderful human being mm -hmm. but i truly and sincerely believe that she would still be a wonderful kind loving yeah. human being without church now mm -hmm. not to say that she doesn't believe with all her heart and that she doesn't really truly love god like she is the epitome of what i think christians are trying to make people think christianity is yes. is like this this person but i i truly believe that if tomorrow she woke up and for whatever reason, suddenly God was no longer an option, I, I think she would mourn that. But I also truly think that she would still be a really wonderful person. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like you don't you don't have to have an excuse to be nice to people. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to have a reason. You don't need points at the end. Right. We can't take it with us. Right. Yeah, I know. It's like the it's like the. Um, the that show drew carey was on that improv show whose line where he's like oh, the yeah, points don't line. matter <laughs> like none, yeah none of it matters that, uh, uh, yeah nothing matters and the points don't count or something like that yeah yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely well courtney i, I want to be respectful of your time i realize i've kept you like 30 minutes past where we no. were supposed to but where can we find you where can we watch your stuff where if people are local if they're in the nashville area yeah. where do you recommend they go tell us a little bit about who you are outside of all of this. Yes, definitely. Um, so uh, you can find me. I might handle if you're watching on YouTube, guys, my handle is Courtney Warner 13. Uh, there's no you and Courtney. Uh, that's the only thing that people usually mess up and Warner like Warner Brothers and the number 13 like Taylor Swift. Easy enough, Yay. right? Um, so that's how you can find me on Instagram on Twitter, uh, threads, uh, TikTok, Facebook, all that's all going to be just under that. Um, and then let's see, and yeah, it'll then be linked below as well. Wonderful. Um, and so, yeah, I have a show coming up at Third Man Records at the Blue Room, and it's going to be, it's October 14th, it's a Saturday, and it's going to be comedy, a lot of all local comics, and then I have a local band playing, so it's always like comedy with musical guests, very like SNL inspired, but with stand up, so, um, and that's kind of what I, I like having it, and like also having music at that venue is just obviously, why wouldn't you have music there, you know, when you can't, when it's, it's the best, I, in my opinion, Third Man Records is the best venue in the world, Blue Room, they are incredible to work with. They really champion like local artists and they, you know, the first two I've produced there by myself have sold out, which is a 200 seat theater, which is like 
not I, not for nothing. It's not bad. You know that's what I mean? Amazing. That's phenomenal. Like the fact that there's no main, there's no big headliners ever. I never have any big headliners. There's it's a Saturday night usually in Nashville. Like there's always stuff going on, and the fact that we can and I don't know, I don't even think I know 200 people that I could personally. Yeah, I literally invite. can't even. Yeah, I couldn't even think of it. And like, and most of those people there, I I have some friends that come. You know, people that bring people, but most of the time it's just people that are like, oh, I want to go check out this comedy night. You know, and I think I hope. We sell out. If I keep telling everybody, if we sell out this next one, it'll be my third show at Third Man Records. I'll get a fucking tattoo. I'll get a tattoo to commemorate it. No uh, Cause I I would. Cause I mean that's I mean for me that's huge. I feel like cause yeah. the venue, that venue just I mean oh, it's owned by Jack White. So like there and he's a big com comedy fan. Him and his wife are big comedy fans. And so they're and they've recorded comedy albums at Third Man. Like they've done the straight to vinyl releases like um Roy Scoville, so cool. Reggie Watts, Aziz Ansari. A bunch of people have like big bigger names have done stuff there so it's like having that connection there and that knowing that they support comedy even though they're a music venue is just really special you know yeah absolutely absolutely and i feel like that's the the parts of you kind of coming mm -hmm. together it's like your music background and your comedy just kind of finding yeah. a, a resting place together dude i feel like it does feel kind of like full form i feel like i was i was telling a friend about this like um with third with the third man show that i feel like i hosted a bunch of some really great shows some really shitty shows over the years and like open mics and stuff and all of that kind of led to me being able to like to have this show and it just yes. li literally was a right place right time they say you know luck is opportunity meets preparation and i feel like in the moment in that i was able to, to start doing that show there with people that i got to meet that literally was what it was it's like okay i've been doing this for seven years now i is just gonna add you know just like this is, it, it just worked out and i feel so lucky and i hope i can do that show there for as long as i live because it's 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 amazing and, and everyone is always super cool and yeah i'm very it's my favorite thing so yeah. yes yes sorry i just i love watching people talk about like what they're passionate about that's like one of my favorite things about virtual oh. media yeah. and getting oh, to share that and dude people. i want to share a fun little anecdote too so like i mentioned like i people think i think people know third man records is jack white's label and company and stuff uh so the white stripes i loved them when i was younger but i felt bad because they weren't christian you know what i mean but i <laughs> loved i love the white stripes and so like so it feels almost like oh it's kind of almost not not closure now that i can like kind of know those know that team of people and like you know i know like i work work at that kind of do shows right now it feels like a weird sort of closure for me of like in a lot of ways yeah. like this is incredible like now the people that i loved and like music that i loved and listened to i now get to work in that same realm as them That's so, so it's cool. which is which is so cool that is um, so cool dude that, but also like make no mistake you've worked your ever loving ass off like oh, let me just say that you. like you because i i think i've said this to you before you know social media makes it look like some people just everything just works out for them but yeah. you're one of those people where like it is evident that you bleed sweat and cry into everything you are a part of and yeah. it's like it so it's like congratulations but also fuck yeah like thank duh you. like of course yeah. this is happening for you like duh thank but, you god thank you for saying that too because also it means a lot coming from you as well because you are such a you are also an incredible hustler like when you moved here to town you're like i run shows i'm a producer i have two specials out on amazon what like i was like who is she you like who is she and like girl? and then meeting you and you're just so like tiny and perfect and you're just like you know and, and like you're like just because you know like hearing you know when you're coming to town like oh we're in a comedy bar here we're doing this and that um it's like well what's the who's who's the booker who's the producer going to be like and then meeting you you're just immediately just so incredible just such a champion of the small of our small scene and of women and like make it your people i remember you messaging me on facebook one time and you're like hey uh who are some you're like i don't get out don't get a chance to get out a ton because i'm always usually at, at my job so like who are some comics that you think are great that deserve stage time that just aren't getting seen and that when you asked me that and we maybe met a few times you'd see me do comedy i was like this this bitch she is a real one like that is such a cool thing that was like because i it's so great because usually it's like bookers usually like but i also i also book stuff so i know it can be hard but it's like the fact yeah. that you were seeking out who is not getting seen who is not appreciated in this town enough by other by other people so i thought that was really cool Thanks. and i i I keep that in mind. I think about that often, honestly. Thank you. That makes me feel so good because I, I remember that night. I, I was literally sitting right here just without mm -hmm. the blue lights. Yeah. But I think, I think that's a big sign of like growth is that there's room at the top. There's yeah. Room, oh, there's room at the top. And like you're so successful. If you help somebody else get successful, that's not going to dim your success. Right. Right. And like I was new here. I felt like I was hopping into some success and like, 
there's enough to go around. I right? agree. Yeah. There's enough to go around. Because we're all different. And also, like, not to be, like, it's totally, like, uh, Machiavellian or whatever I don't even know if I'm using that term right but it's like I think if you help people and people see that you like oh well this person knows Courtney and then they got here it looks good for you honestly you know yeah. I think a lot, it's a lot about like talking I was talking to some friends about like leaving like what, what your legacy would be like you know because everyone has one regardless of like what you do everyone always has some someone in people in their life when they die like whatever um and I was thinking a lot about like because I like pro wrestling so I think a lot about like how older wrestlers will kind of foster and bring in new wrestlers but they'll still be attached to them so they're still making money they're still getting promotion so it's yeah. like presented by you know so and so a drag queens do that quite a bit too yep. um a, a fun little and I, I know I, I am talking a lot so I just no, go I'll, for it this is your I, time yeah go for it and I'm, also, I'm here as long as you got time so I did um I'm my uh, my favorite one of my favorite YouTube like uh guilty plus not just not it's not guilty just a pleasure is like I like like theme park history and like like how like kind of like the engineering of like uh roller coasters how they're built like different like dark rides so I so I love I, I just will put that on like watch like the history of like like Disney water parks or like whatever. Um, I'm not a Disney adult. I really think Disney's an evil corporation. Uh, please pay your writers and actors fair wages. We, you know, please do, is, please. Please do that. Um, we do not need another season of The Apprentice for fuck's sake. And so, oh, you know, you know what I mean? Um, but I was watching a, a video about like why Universal, Universal Orlando or Universal Studios, like with their theme parks, they're making some really cool moves. And the bro video broke down why it's like so they're building a new theme park, like a small, like kind of like a six flag flag version ish kind of one in Texas. Um, and they're also like expanding, I think, in their California one. And their the commentator was like, this is why this is like a big deal for them, because people may not be able to afford to go to Orlando or to California, but they can maybe take their family to Texas or something for yeah. like a little one, yeah. or the cheaper one. So mm -hmm. Universal is doing a cool thing of like building a legacy, like kids are like going to be like, oh, I wrote Harry Potter or I wrote Jurassic World or whatever. Uh, and when I was with my family on this little vacation, we took, you know, yeah. so it's like where, where Disney already had that built in where like kids parents take their kids to disney and then they the, the adults go back to disney and take their kids and that's how they keep their business it's just yeah. through like the legacy and stuff and that's what I, universal studios is trying to do uh which i think is i think is smart and cool um anyway yeah. so all to say is yeah there's room at the top for everyone and if you help people out i think it, it just it's just overall better for everyone you know yeah yeah and if the worst thing people can say about you is that you help other people out like right. that's the number one thing I ever hear about you is like you help people out you oh. help people get stage time you help them like I've even heard some people say they've like asked you for feedback and you've given mm -hmm. them feedback even though you're like busy and you've got stuff going on and I just think that's wonderful um oh, I love you. how this just became like a girl like love sesh we're just like oh my I God, love it. I'm like I'm like girl and you're beautiful and never change <laughs> yes. yes people listening to this are like get a room Ew. I know they're like they're probably already turned off by now <laughs> <laughs>